thought today I would show you how to make a super simple two fabric self binding placemat. We have pulled out some of the pairings to give you some ideas. Um, they are currently available in my store for purchase while the quantities last. There's so many combinations that you can do. You could take two contrasting fabrics, two complementary ones. It works great with seasonal fabrics, with novelty fabrics, um, wonderful with batiks. They make great presents for our friends and family, or maybe just for us, just because. So let's get started. All we need to make two placemats is 0.35 of a meter of a main fabric, 0.45 of a backing, um, and also 0.35 of a fusible fleece. I do prefer the fusible fleece as it's 100% polyester and it doesn't shrink like some cottons do. For our American friends, it would be a half a yard each of our main, our backing, and our batting. So you can see for the main fabric, I cut my place mats at 13 inches by 17 inches and this will be the finished size of the place mat. Our backing fabric we cut at 17 by 21. We want to make sure that it's two inch bigger all the way around. And then also our batting will be cut our finished size at 13 by 17. So here we go. Just to give this a press. And then I need to find my centers. This will just help our placement a little bit better. So I'm going to fold in half. and give our fold a press. And I'm going to fold it again in half in the other direction, just so we can find the centers of our sides. We are going to take our fusible batting. We're going to put it with the fusible side up and it's the rough side. You can feel the little the bumps of the glue on there. And I am going to take my fabric with the right side up and I'm going to press it to my batting. I like to use steam at this uh, time. And take our time. Remember we have to melt that glue, that's what sticks. So it does take a minute or two to get this stuck down properly. Now I'm going to find the centers of these sides and I can mark these with a pin. Just like that. And also the centers of these sides. One there, and one there. Okay, so now we're going to take our backing fabric and we are going to place it right side down. I'm using a batik, so there's really no right or wrong side with this. But just remember if it's a regular fabric, the right side is down, this is the wrong side. I'm going to place my um, placemat right side up. And now you can barely see them, but you can see my fold lines. I am going to align those to the center of my pins. And that will center my placemat. You can see if we want to measure, it is going to be two inches on all our sides. I am just going to put a little bit of glue on here 
just to hold this in place. I like to use the 505. It's also available in my store. I don't need that much. And I do like to turn it over and just make sure that there's no wrinkles in our backing. If you don't have any glue, we can always put in just a few pins just to hold it in place because we do have to do a little bit of quilting on here. For time wise, I am just going to do a cross, but this is one of the places where we can actually um, uh, use some of our fancy stitches on our sewing machine. We can also use um, our free motion and start using it there to practice your free motion. And if I had a longer ruler, this would probably work better. But I am using white chalk. It's my preferred method of um, uh, marking something for quilting. You can also use the friction markers, but remember they may come back after they're washed. But this, I like to use either the white chalk or a blue wash away. Now again, you can also use one of the fancy stitches on your sewing machine or just a plain straight stitch if that's all you have. So I like to move it to about a three and a half, 3.5, just a little bit longer stitch. And we're just going to quilt now. I am going to lock my stitches at the beginning and at the end of the row by either using the tack button or by backing, going back and forward a little bit. I'm going to the end and then I'm going to lock stitch it again or again back up and forward a, a couple stitches. We're going to do one in the other direction. Again, I can just back up, back forward, and do it that way. forward, backwards, to the races. Just going to trim my threads. Now I, I quilted with orange and I will also sew my corners with the orange just so you can see them a bit better. But if I was really doing this, I would probably be using black thread because my backing is black. Okay, let me just get rid of my wool mat and get my cutting board. Now, we do need um, a little special tool, but it might be what you already have in your sewing box. I want to have a ruler that has 245 lines that intersect at the quarter inch of our ruler. So you can see this is one of my favorite rulers. It's a creative grid six and a half by 12 and a half. They have those two 45 inch lines that intersect right at the corner. Another favorite ruler of mine is our Studio 180 wing clipper ruler. Again, it has the two 45 inch lines that intersect at that quarter inch mark. I believe uh, there's probably other rulers out there. I know that um, the square squared ruler also would have that marking on it. Um, just so long as you have two 45 degree lines that intersect a quarter inch from the edge of your ruler. So what I'm going to do now is I need my cutting, my mat back. I forgot to press the seams. So what I want to do is I want to press my backing fabric 
so the edge is lined up with the edge of my placemat. And I do have a little bit of steam on there just because I want to get a nice crisp um, fold. Again, just to say that it's just on the edge, I don't want to overlap it at all. I'm just going to open this up and do this side. There we go. Okay, back to our cutting. I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to open up my seam and I am going to draw with my chalk or a pencil or whatever you can see on your fabric right in that fold line that we folded into our fabric. Just like that. So now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take those intersecting diagonal lines and I am going to align them right up on the edge of my placemat along the front. I am going to take my rotary cutter. You can see that I'm going to have that quarter inch seam allowance left at the point. I am going to cut my corner off. I'm just going to place my quarter inch foot on my sewing machine. I didn't use that when I was quilting. And I'm going to move my stitch length back down to two. Now I'm going to place this right sides together for my backings. I'm going to align my edges and I am going to sew from that drawn line off to the inside corner. I can put a pin out here just to keep that uh, together. And here I go. So I want to start at the line and then I can either back stitch or lock. So if you're going to back stitch, take two stitches forward, go two stitches back, and then forward again. And at this end, I definitely want to go off the edge and then back stitch. And that's going to keep that corner nice and tight. I'm going to do that on all four corners. So we're going to mark. I'll line up our edges and to cut right sides together. Aligning the lines, cutting our corner, folding the backing right side together. Make sure you don't sew on top of your placemat. We just want to sew the backing. last corner mark 
it. Cut it. Fold it. Sew it. Now we're just going to trim our excess threads off. And fold our corners. Okay. So, take your uh, seam that you sew in, open it up, stick your thumb right in the corner, and push it right around. You can also use your purple thing if you have to and poke out the corner a little bit. Do that to all four corners. Press our seam open with our thumb. Flip. One last corner. Open the seam. Flip. And now I'm just going to press this again, pressing all these in folding that edge back under, up to the edge, laying it nice and flat. So you can see we have this beautiful sewn mitered corner. Now all I'm going to do is stitch this down. I think I'm going to change my thread to black this time instead of the orange. I am just going to use a straight stitch. So I'm going to move it up to a three and a half again to match the quilting that I did on the placemat. When I'm doing binding, I also like to use my open toe applique foot. It just gives me a really nice place that I can see well. We can put some pins in here, but it stays down pretty good by itself. So what I like to do is I like to set it up with the inside toe of my foot right along the edge of my binding. And I am going to move my needle. So it is about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to just lock my stitches and so all the way around. At the corner, I'm going to sew until the mitered seam. I'm going to put my needle in the down position, lift my foot, and I'm just going to pivot around and sew down the other side. sewing with a fast 720 today so I love when my needle goes in the down position my foot just hovers up a little bit so I can pivot around the corner without having to do anything else once I sew, start sewing my foot will go back down and off I go and because I didn't start right at the corner I'm just going to come back around till I meet my stitches and I'm going to um, lock them, cut them, 
and super simple we could be done I could also do maybe a little bit more quilting in there if I like and I have a couple other examples that I'd like to show you so you can see my chicken one I don't know if you can focus in or not color wise it's hard to see but because we buy these fancy machines we need to justify needing all these stitches so you can see I quilted this one with a serpentine what's really great with the serpentine stitch too is if you fall off of your line it doesn't show because it just zigs back and forth across the line and I don't know if you can focus in here but I used a blanket stitch to sew this one down I don't know I probably won't show this is another one that I've been working on you can see that I was practicing my free motion quilting so I took a pattern that was a leaf and I was just outlining the shapes of the leaves and I had this wonderful leaf shape in my sewing machine so I used some variegated thread made a contrast from my binding and sewed my binding down with that you can see right here you could also if that's all you have you could use a little zigzag the sky's the limit so you can go super simple and easy or do a little bit more thank you for joining me today um, if you've liked what you've seen, please uh, like my video and maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll get more um, notification of more of these videos as they come available. Happy sewing!